Australia Post to the rescue. Regulations destroying jobs. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee. Let's look at this article coming from ABC News discussing, well, the Australia Post to the rescue. Producers devastated as Australia Post decides to stop delivering, delivering perishable foods. So this is a case of regulation destroying jobs and opportunities. So let's start by having a look at a viewer poll that I asked the viewers of the channel to give their feedback on asking, have you ever ordered any food via the mail and what was your experience? So of the 633 people who voted, 26% said yes, no problems. 3% said yes, only once there were issues. 48% said no, never had. And 22% didn't even know you could. Because it's something you may not think about. Can, can, I, can I order food, particularly perishables? We've gotten butter, we've gotten salami. And, you know, we've, we even had a whole, not through the post, but we had a whole lot of meat delivered. We weren't too happy with that. We found a better butcher here. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at some of the comments from the viewers. So if we go here, we'll go newest first. So Sonia. What about yes, multiple times, isolated issues, not enough to see all together. Well, Sonia, that's number one. Yes, no, oh, no problems. Okay. Uh, news of Paul. The evil that is happening at Australia Post is unbelievable. Another step towards privatization and destruction of the social contract banning, f banning food items in the mail. No logical reason why this is happening. It will destroy a small business. Exactly what the oligarchs gates. Okay. <laughs> I think you're going a bit off on a tangent there, Paul, mate. This is regulation going a bit haywire at the state level. That's my understanding that there's so many complications. Uh, I mean, you can you can see you know, this is part of a grander scheme. I mean, the question of whether Australia Post should be privatized or not. Well, that's another question entirely. Some people seem to love their Australia Post. They're all getting behind this CEO. I mean, uh, you know, this CEO who's feigning that she's been bullied, a multimillionaire. Uh, you can't get to that level without being a bit resilient, without being a bit tough. Women women aren't that weak at that level. Or at least that's just the, because perhaps it's my own bias because all the women in business I've dealt with are in the construction sector. So they're, they're not little they're not little princesses. <laughs> maybe being, you know, going up that sea level. Yeah, maybe that's it. You just kept on getting pushed up and up and up to meet quota fillers. Is that what she's saying? Is that why she can't handle a bit of criticism or, or some um, politics? So I, I don't feel too sorry about any of it. What about you? You know, anyway, Max is going, ordered one pallet of long-term freeze-dry to stock away with my other preps. Matt, ordered cheese from Coal River Farm, highly recommended from Tasmania to Sydney. Perfect with no issues arrive with the ice gel packet still frozen yeah you we've done that um, we got a big butter we didn't actually like the butter too much because it was uh, it tasted too much like cheese um ante yep ordered the uh, famous saka tort cake from austria dhl delivery no problems beautiful cake there you go would a cake be perishable so maybe order 12 packs and notice how they're using dhl delivery order 12 packs of dried egg but they gave me one garbage bag full instead. Okay, sounds like Mike had a, a nightmare. Aussie mum, always. I grew up in a remote area, so with everything brought in by freezer, truck, or mail. Rarely had any trouble at all. Even bought all our clothes and books by mail. These days, I occasionally get dry goods sent. My husband has been buying Australian specialist bread mixes via mail as he enjoys baking. We also buy pet snacks and toys as they are high quality, made with care by farm wise, basically. I used to get more until the uh, the local wait and pay store started up, but I wouldn't hesitate. Any doubts, just phone them. They're generally great. Um, Clayton, to be honest, if the globe go, goes to a complete S, things like gold and cash won't have any value. What you want to hoard is alcohol, tobacco, dope, and medicine. Okay, I mean, he's, he's going the quite the prepper tangent, but we're talking about getting food in the mail, mate. I, I guess... You know, there are a whole lot of, you know, I guess it's a prepper thing if you want to get your food in the mail. I remember, what is it, Tim Pool was plugging a, a supply that had a month's worth of food. But all the, like, the long-term non-perishable food is all garbage. It's all, you know, sugar, 
and carbohydrates with vegetable oil. I guess it'll keep you alive. Not much else. I order in bulk a lot. Cinnamon, uh, cacao powder, coconut oil. Never had an issue. They'd be all dry products too, but still. A spent key. I ordered a lot of freeze-dried uh, survivor food. I'm one of those paranoid types. <laughs> okay. So I think, I think we got a few on the channel that like it. You know? Intelligent people prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So don't think so low of yourself. It's nothing wrong with having... I mean, you really should have some reserves in one way or another. So, and Crest Cutter, two months uh, supply of Australian Army surplus MREs. No dramas with them. I just should have bought more when they were still cheap. I remember as a kid, my uh, my mate's dad had all this old army rations. And I uh, would sneak under the house and would eat them all. Like, years past expiry date. So there we have it, everyone. There's the, the you know, opinion of the viewers. So let's have a look at this article, Australia Post to the Rescue, because this is going to really hit some businesses right when they, they may have pivoted to postal. They may have pivoted to online. Oh, this is just terrible timing, you know? So producers devastated as Australia Post decides to stop delivering perishable foods. Surely they could, if it's more complicated or there are more issues, they could just increase the costs and make it happen. There's a market for it. Australia Post's decision to no longer deliver perishable food items has devastated producers around the country, many of whom rely solely on the service. The government-owned company announced that from the 30th of June, it would no longer carry items such as meats, seafood, eggs, or frozen meals because of complex food safety and regulatory requirements across states and territories. This is a heavy blow for growers like Victorian truffle producer Christian Simpson, who sends 50 parcels a week through Australia Post, accounting for as much as 70% of her sales. I'm devastated, she said. It is extremely bad news for us. I mean, this is the ultimate way to get from farm to plate. Really. The only middleman is the postage. Isn't that what, isn't that what people want? You know, they want to cut out all the middlemen. Because truffles are perishables, we always pack them in little boxes of polystyrene with cold ice in order to keep the truffles as fresh as possible. We've been using Express Post and have been very happy and confident in telling our customers that if they purchase fresh, tr fresh truffles, Australia Post will get it to them within a day or two. Miss Simpson said she was worried she would not be able to find an alternative distributor. I'm sure you'll be able to eventually. I'm sure that there'll be other suppliers. I can only imagine that using a courier or other means of transport will be extremely expensive and not as reliable and not as efficient, she said. Oh, uh, maybe, I don't know. I'm sure it'll be more expensive. We'll have to see. Get this sorted. North Tasmanian salmon farm owner or co-owner, Ben Pike, uh, Piker, who sells hot smoked salmon and spices, hopes the company will re-establish its, re-evaluate its decision. We probably send around eighty to $100,000 worth of freight in the mail with Australia Post per year, he said. Well, if you're sending that much, surely you could uh, negotiate with other suppliers. Maybe you get a preferred deal. Maybe, you know, other logistic companies. We as a business community had a meeting with Australia Post and suggested that they ask for a 12-month reprieve or moratorium and that they go to each state regulator and have an open discussion about how to get this sorted. The government has been pushing to buy online and use COVID safe delivery. So everyone is spending thousands upgrading their systems. And now the only carrier specifically for Tasmanians that has door to door reach for all Australia can't do that. Well, there you go. Um, Karen Spencer, the general manager of the New South Wales based Kulamon Col um, Cheese Co. said the company had shifted its focus online ahead of the pandemic. Now with Australia Post removing that service, it does limit our ability to move our product to a wider distribution at a price that's fair and reasonable, he said. Well, your prices are going to have to go up. They're going to have to go up because of the government regulation in all the states causing these issues. There you go. That's the problem, everyone. Don't blame Australia Post. Don't blame them. Blame the state governments that are imposing these regulations. It's like the same thing. We've got different size railway lines in different states. Australia, sure, it's a big country, but why do we have different gauge lines in different states? You, can, you know, you have to change trains. So, 
We are trialing a couple of other companies now, but because these are perishable items, there's no guarantee. It's at your own risk. Well, that's, that's business. Australia Post in talks. In a statement, Australia Post said it understood the impact of this decision on producers. It said it was working with customers and industry regulators to determine a path forward. This will include meeting with food safety regulators and health authorities to discuss the regulations imposed on Australia Post. It said the carriage of perishable food requires, requirements differ by state and include complex requirements on vehicle type, site and vehicle registration, license maintenance, staff training and order requirements. That's the issue. That's the issue. It's going to destroy entire businesses. It's going to destroy the viability of businesses. This is... It's, you know, it's bad for the environment too because you've got increased increased uh, middlemen there you know, if you want to go that, down that path. So what is the solution to this, everyone? What is the solution? Well, simply, if you're in the business, you've got to ensure you've got a diversity of supplies. You can't be completely dependent on something that's so, so tied up to the state. Surely, if Australia Post is delivering the service, they should just increase their cost to absorb... absorb these additional onerous requirements that are imposed upon them by the state level. Maybe the farmers should be lobbying the government directly, not trying to get Australia Post to lobby. You know, is there a market opportunity? And will this result in an increased cost of food? And what's the potential risk factor here of people eating food that may have gone off or spoiled? They could get food poisoning, you could die. You could check it yourself. You can, you've got these inbuilt systems to usually detect when food isn't too, too well. How many people are actually getting injured by food at the moment? So there we have it, guys. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching. If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using any of our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can help us by buying shares by signing up to Self Wealth or Stake. You can join Independent Reserve for crypto trading and help us out there. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says. You can see the pocket squares we make there or the other products from Teespring. You can use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or help us via PayPal. Take care. Have a great day. I will see you next time. Bye for now.